with the Chirp YouTube channel. Today our video is about gestures. Pointing, reaching, these things are gestures. Rubbing our tummies when we're hungry, that's a gesture too. We want to use more gestures. That is the point of this video. There have been some families I've worked with who didn't want their kids to be using gestures because they wanted their kids to talk. This is very much like families who maybe don't want their kids to use communication books because they think that it will prevent their kids from learning verbal communication. And we are not finding these things to be the case. We are finding that the gestures and the visuals add up to being a scaffold to enable our kids to learn language even better. Now, that said, I'm not a huge fan of teaching kids with developmental differences actual sign language because usually we're talking about kids mostly with uh, an autism spectrum disorder here. This is my, my area of specialty and I usually don't recommend that their families try to teach them like American Sign Language or even Baby Sign usually. The reason is because most of our kids who have an autism spectrum disorder also have something called apraxia, which is a difficulty sequencing muscle movements. This is one of the reasons why kids are a lot of times delayed in their verbal language. It's really complex to move the muscles of the mouth and the tongue in the, and the lungs and all of that in the right way and at the right time to make words, sounds and words come out. So if a child has uh, messages being sent from the brain that aren't getting interpreted right or in the right sequence by the muscles, then the sounds and the words don't come out right. This also happens with hands. So if our kids have apraxia and it affects how they speak, then it is very likely to affect how they're able to move their hands also. And it can be extremely frustrating for them to try to learn the signs, to be expected to make the signs when they want something, and to be not able to do that. That is equally frustrating to not being able to talk and being expected to talk to get what they want. This is why I always recommend visuals instead, because visuals are right there. All you have to do is grab it and hand it to someone, and it does the trick. So start my series on communication books right up there. If you haven't already watched that, it is a little bit on the older side, so maybe some of my newer viewers haven't seen that series yet. That can be really helpful in supporting the emerging communication skills of kids who are not fully verbal yet. Having said that, gestures are great. Gestures are a form of communication. If a kid points at something, that's wonderful. If a kid reaches for something, that's great. I want to support that by saying, if the kid reaches for the train, I want to support that by saying, train please, and then getting the train down so that I'm modeling the language, giving the child a chance to practice that language in his head, and then hopefully eventually it will come out his mouth too. But the reach in itself is a communicative effort, and I need to make sure that I am responding to that. Also, as the caregivers and play partners and communication partners of our kids, I want to be using lots of gestures. When I'm talking about something, I don't just want to say, wow, look at that flower. I want to say, oh, wow, look at that flower. And I want to point. Imagine that you are in a foreign country. You don't speak the language very well. Maybe you have a few words here and there, but people are trying to communicate with you. What do they do? Number one, they speak slower. Number two, they usually speak louder. Number three, they use gestures. If they're trying to ask you if you want a cup of tea, they will hold up the teacup and maybe a tea bag and shake it. And if at the same time they say chai, you're going to get the idea that chai might mean tea. And that's going to make more sense to you. You're going to learn it faster that way than if they said chai 
and you had no idea what they were talking about and you couldn't connect it to anything visually. That's the same situation with our kids, so keep that in mind. You definitely want to be associating something visual, whether that is a gesture or an actual visual or a visual picture, with the verbal language that you're doing. More gestures is better. If you want to go for a walk, you can do a cute little walk. You can actually walk and say, walk. There are all sorts of opportunities. As much as you can, pair something visual with the verbal language that you're doing and use more gestures in general. That is your homework for this week. Use more gestures. Catch yourself when you are communicating with your child and think, is there something visual that I could pair with this? Some sort of body movement that would give this verbal language something for my child to attach onto that is visual. I hope that you're well, healthy, and happy. I hope that you're having a great week, and I hope that you learned something in today's video. I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day. Bye.